Good evening, everyone. It's a delight to have here tonight such wonderful architects, Kazuyo Sejima and Ryue Nishizawa. When thinking about the ways in which projects can be regarded as works on the architectural discipline, it is useful to distinguish between those that involve paradigmatic transformations and those that are idiomatic, elaborations on the repertoire. It is exciting to do so since with the 20th century, we witnessed so many developments in which architecture defied this distinction, this dialectic. And it is to this tradition that Sejima and Nishizawa belong. Think about some of their paradigms of space. The arrays and piles of cubes at the Kanazawa Museum for the 21st century, the museum in New York, the Moriyama House. These are indicative of a new type of discreteness and disaggregation. The continuous and porous surfaces of the Rolex and the flower house, just to mention two, introduce the exterior as a cesura of a sort, more interior than the thermal interior itself the exterior in those projects becomes. The, the highly reflective clover-shaped surfaces at the Serpentine and in the Toledo Museum, projects like these render voids in space through reflection, transforming them in ways we have not seen before. And their work, typologies are deployed with such sparseness, sparseness that they seem as much to do with matters of organizational irreducibility as with a muteness that we might call a new white-on-white -white idiom. Indeed, in their projects, typology and its formal and material articulation are one and the same expression, inseparable. Curiously, when this happens, and so many of their projects have to do with the space between as opposed to the space within or without, the formal attributes seem exceedingly present and absent at the same time. Architecture both becomes conspicuous and disappears at the same time. Take the New York Museum, which we all know so well, where several of the classic white box galleries are forced to cede space to the exterior expression, the pile of boxes, a white icon in the otherwise dark red and gray bowery, the museum appears to be made from the form of aggregated party wall tenements rotated on their side as if a redeployment of the ubiquitous urban morphology now occupies a void in the very same fabric. <laughs> but it is not only the boundary of spaces or the presence or absence of the surfaces that invert what we confront but the way we live in them that is at stake in their work. Sejima curated the 2010 Venice Biennale entitled People Meet in Architecture. A visiting architectural theorist declared upon seeing the show that, quote, the architectural manifesto is dead. It's all about social narrative now. But in fact, one of the boldest claims for Sejima and Neshizawa's work has to do with their articulation of an architecture appropriate to the new digital world. For people living in this interconnected age, many theorists have remarked that they set up experiments in which the raw program of the building is configured with an unusual relationship between, through, and within spaces using layers of reflection and transparency, an experiment that lets us in the end see what people do in these spaces. In this way, dozens of types of spatial relationships and experiences are being created, tested, and the outcomes are unpredictable. Perhaps these experiments point, point toward a manifesto or ideology rather than just a set of social narratives. In any case, I think it's fair to say that one of the sources of the power of their work is their engagement with a contemporary view that is difficult to pinpoint because we are within it, they immerse us in it so intensely, and with their work, both the paradigmatic and the idiomatic operations on the corpus of architecture 
are subsumed within this grand social experiment. I'd like to turn now to thanking everyone who has been involved in working so tirelessly on the New Innocence um, Symposium, uh, sorry, lecture series um, about emerging contemporary architecture in Japan, especially to thank the Japanese, uh, uh, sorry, the GSD Japan group, the students that have worked so hard and who have established again before us tonight, very important, uh, the donation table for the tsunami victims. And um, I would like everyone just to reflect for a moment on, on that, but to jump back and remember that just before that we were in the pleasure of being so inspired by these works, to return to that tonight and to remember and realize that you are with architects who have inspired you so much. So many students have looked at the work of these architects. In fact, it is having a great impact all around the world, I think. And uh, they are a paradigm of our time, very significant. This is a really wonderful occasion. I am so pleased and I, I welcome, please join me in welcoming our guests tonight. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for inviting us here. We are very happy to have a lecture tonight. And uh, we came from Tokyo. And in Tokyo, there are three offices. One is SANA, is a collaborative office, me and Nishizawa, and one is my office, and the third one is Nishizawa's own office. And tonight we will explain 10 projects, which uh, including the three offices work. And tonight we made a title, The Architecture is uh, Environment, and uh, every day we like we like to make an architecture which uh, make an environment and also which have a relation to the bigger environment. And uh, we hope today's our speech can um, say, mention, or you can understand what we try to do. <laughs> So can, uh, can you turn off the, the light? Thank you. This is, this is the uh, first project that we can show today, which is Kanazawa Museum that we made uh, several years ago in Kanazawa City. The, this is uh, our project. The, the location of the, this museum is really uh, center of the Kanazawa city, being surrounded by the uh, city hall, state hall in front, and then they have a, a famous historical garden here and downtown behind. And then there was a situation that uh, everybody uh, come from all around to the museum. And then we started thinking what kind of the, how, uh, how the museum can create the nice relation with the surrounding that Kanazawa city has. And this is the shape that we gave the round shape for this museum, we do four entrance gate, which is opening to all different direction to invite people who are coming from all around. And then uh, we have a museum, Paison, here in the center of the circle, and having the pro public program around, uh, along the facade to allow people to come in without pay. And then they can get in and go through and get out as they like. 
And uh, another thing that we did is the having the, all the exhibition rooms to be independent each other, having a hallway, a uh, corridor in between to connect them. And this, this independent uh, location of this exhibition space gives very transparent feeling. The people outside the museum can see through and they can see inside the museum. They can see what's going on inside the museum. And this is the variation of the exhibition spaces that we prepared to create kind of diversity for the exhibition space. And all the exhibition space had, this is a section of these exhibition spaces. We have a glass ceiling, we have grass roof, and uh, louver inside, uh, louver and the uh, fluorescence light inside the double glass layer to create the uh, uh, very different uh, light situation. Uh, we can create the very dark room, and we also can create very bright uh, room, like outdoor space under the sun. And then we gave the four patio like this on the border between the free zone and the museum zone, so that the people in the museum zone and the uh, public zone can see each other through the patio. And this is the hallway uh, where people can move from the room to the other room. And this is the inside the box, inside the exhibition space. They, they can appreciate the sunlight coming inside the, the rooms. And then some of the people can do the mixture between the mixture the light with the Florence uh, artificial light and daylight. And then the way to use the space is a kind of a diverse, uh, flexible. Now people, they can use the space as an exhibition, uh, as a museum, but uh, not only as a museum, but also they can do the workshop or concert. And this is a photo to show the when they do the many different concert on using many different rooms. So people can wonder, they can go from the room to the, another room to join the different concert going uh, together. Because the old galleries, the, you remember the plan is the directly face to the public zone. So sometimes the museum change the entrance to the gallery zone. And depend on the show, the, the sometimes the curator use the whole galleries, which is the biggest the museum's zone, but sometimes divided too. But this case is divided completely independently. So the, peop, the, the, whole, the inside the museum zone, the, the whole way become a free zone. And so that means the, always the, the exhibition define the museum zone. And uh, depend on the exhibition, the pay zone and free zone is uh, moving, changing. Uh, this is the one of the patio that we have. Now you can see how the, the exhibition box uh, kept independent each other and then you can see through you can see the Kanazawa uh, city and the garden from the inside the building and this patio is not just uh, just uh, uh, sun providing uh, patio but also kind of uh, outside exhibition space this patio has swimming pool the art project done by the Argentina artist. This is kind of interesting. The people uh, staying in the free zone can come to the pool side. And the people in the museum, pay zone side, can access 
to the bottom, and then they can meet each other through the through the water. And then this is another patio with a green uh, sculpture done by the French artist. And this is the, the local local plantation facade. And then they had an international international plantation facade on the other side. And then we have many different program, public program on the public public zone. This is a lecture hall situated in the public area, free zone. Then artists, people, museum people can use this space as a, a for the reception or lecture or workshop. And this is a, a library where Kanazawa uh, City people can come to stay to read the book. And then uh, this is a children's workshop where the kids and artists can work together. And uh, some of the artists uh, uh, come, get, uh, come out from the museum to do their, their project. This is one of the the art project that the Japanese artist did to surround the building by the flower plantation. Uh, it's a morning flower, and uh, it's very interesting, and we learned a lot after the completion because we spent a lot of time to define the plan, but the, after that, uh, we realize the artist or the curator can develop further. That means that because when we are making, we are making this uh, museum, we a little bit worry because we prepare the different type of proportional galleries, but we are not sure it's enough or not. But actually later we land the gallery or the architecture itself is uh, exhibited by the artist or the by e using. So sometimes, the, because this museum is round and surrounded by the transparent glass, so that means the, the artist found the maybe to wrap the morning flower with the children and it's a very convenient building to do that project, I think. And also, sometimes the gallery uh, looks small, but sometimes galleries appear very big. So uh, it's a very interesting for us. The, the architecture has an opportunity to be uh, created the, by using. This is facade made with the curved transparent glass wall, so people walking in the city can see what happening inside the museum. This is very transparent. Uh, transparency create the very uh, create a museum very open to the city, and then some of the artists uh, do the project in the public area public area and the museum area kind of blend in each other. We are trying to uh, make, realize the open museum, open and transparent the museum where anybody, everybody can come and enjoy to stay. And next project is the uh, EPFL project, which is uh, uh, located in Lausanne, Switzerland, and it completed the, the end of uh, two, the, two years ago, <laughs> the 2009. And uh, so the, this is the existing campus, and uh, this project started just 
after the completion of the Kanazawa Museum. And uh, we, uh, and then the, 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 the university people asked us to think about what, which type of place is the space to learn new thing, or to think, of, to think the new thing. And also, the, they want to, the university want, wanted to have a place which the student uh, can gather together. Because the, this university is very big and there's so many different departments and there are no space people can sit together. So, which is the original idea is uh, this open 24 hours. But now, I mean, I think maybe 10 in the evening will close, I think. <laughs> and uh, we propose uh, one big space uh, like that. <laughs> the, this is a very beginning drawing which made the for competition. The, there is the big campus, EPFL, and the site is in front of the existing campus. And uh, also the, the university asked to invite, to think about it, to invite the people from the, you, this is a university, Lausanne University, and also from the neighborhood. And there is a beautiful lake, so also expected that from building people can see the lake. And we studied a different typology, but the end we thought maybe it's better that to have the one-story building uh, because of the is a space for people come and to meet and to learn, to is a discussion that to can to able to speak. And but at the same time the Kanaza of the size is like this and we knew that even we try to make a, a, the open to the every direction still if the we make just one story building, people can touch only the edge of the building. And also we didn't want to make a building just uh, avoid people because this is in front of the existing campus, so we like to have some in continuity that people from the city come to go to uh, this existing uh, campus. Then we found the idea to bring the, some uh, slab higher, and so then I think the people can pass under the, this building and can go to smoothly to the existing campus. But at the same time, also people have a very big opportunity just to enter this building. So that this is the diagram. So we made a four shells so that everywhere people come to this building, people can easily to arrive the center of the building, not edge of the building, and to enter this building, but at the same time also can pass through the, to the another the direction of the existing campus. And also if you stand in front of this building, this is a big building, but still you can see the exist, it's not avoid the view to see the existing campus. And you can see both together, both the existing campus and also the interior of this building. So this is a model photo. And you, if once the people enter the center of the, arrive the center of the building, you can go to where you want to. And this is the interior model photo. The, there are hills, it's a shell. Under the, under the shell, you can pass to the existing campus, but also the shell divide the few zones. And uh, so this is a section diagram. So this move around six meters, and then the, naturally you, uh, you will be invited the highest place and you can see the lake. Even the, from the back, you can see the lake through the big courtyard. And normally the interior courtyard, the courtyard is uh, completely like this, that, uh, surrounded by the interior space, which is outside, but it's, uh, actually a little bit far from the real outside. And this 
coat, this type of coat is sometimes very nice, have a very calm uh, space, but at the same time, a little bit isolated. So, but uh, this type of courtyard, easily to connect the interior, but at the same time, also directly to connect to the real outside, which is, in this case, is a neighborhood or the existing campus. And this is the study model of the structure. The, the model is a little bit strange, but the biggest span is 80 meter and 80 con centimeter concrete span fly. And there are two hills, one big hill and a small hill divide three zones. And this big hill move to the center at the back. The back is faced to the existing campus. And this divide the three zones. And uh, if you go, if you, this, the, this is the one biggest character of this building is if you enter here and then you go up the small hill, you can see that this, the lower area, but you, because of the, the ceiling come down, the ceiling move parallelly with the floor, so that means the ceiling cut to your view. So, which is, means that this interior space is a huge random space, but you cannot see the edge of the building. Always that you can see the only uh, continuity, but uh, no edge. And according to your movement, the space appear in, around you. So this is, uh, uh, I think, the, uh, we always try to find some relation between the interior and outside, uh, exterior, and also we like to make a, a new type of space. And this case is a huge random space, but always uh, some intimate space appear around you. And from now, uh, we will quickly show the, our process. This is a computer, the, the structure engineer is Sasaki, and Sasaki made a new the system for this uh, the, uh, type of uh, uh, structure. And then the, we make uh, some scheme, and the computer suggests us we must change. This is more efficient, but then there's some uh, dialogue, a <laughs> lot of dialogue with computer. And then the end, the, <laughs> So we make this, and then the computer said, you must change this hole, because the hole helps to reduce the weight, and uh, also the height. But the computer suggests we must make higher, but this makes the slope become steep. It's impossible. So this is a lot of communication, and the, finally we decide the shape. And this showed some example. <laughs> and then the... <laughs> And then also the, the courtyard, the hold, is a very strong relation to the uh, structure, but also to define softly the spaces, but also the from, through the courtyard, we take a natural ventilation from the lake. So that means that also the, sometimes natural ventilation required us more bigger uh, courtyard or the position. And also, so if we bring a lot of natural ventilation, that we must carry the speed. So that makes also us to, made us to change the position or size. And also the, the daylight, the, we have a lot of glass, but a very low and huge plate. So that means also looks very lot of glass, but we must carry also the daylight. And this is the, the sound. Uh, uh, reduction analysis. This is uh, most uh, import, one of the important things. Is, uh, this is a very big one room space, but also the courtyard position and also the floor height uh, works for the uh, acoustic uh, uh, issue. So the, uh, if you go to, you visit this the building, the the restaurant or food court is very uh, rowdy, but uh, if you move to the back, the, which is a library, become very quiet. So the, I mean the, the position of the courtyard or the size or the height of the slab is all uh, decided by the many technical aspects. And this is the final plan. So this is the entrance. 
and uh, so there is one place, big flat place, the food, food court and the cafe and also bookshop, uh, the bank and the student office. And there are two hills, the one small hill, there is auditorium and there is a big another hill. There is a restaurant, the director see the lake, also the, the behind the, the open library and behind the, the big hill there is a research center and also the offices and some group work area. And uh, also the, this is the main entrance but these uh, works as an independent entrance directly to the auditorium or the food court or office or the, uh, the uh, office for the students. And this is more easy to understand, but this is a one huge space, and there are uh, three zones, and softly connected by the hill. And this is uh, the this photo is just before the completion. The, the, the this is the existing campus, and from campus you can approach to the entrance hall. And you see the, the library, and uh, if you stand the library, you see the, also the lake and the beautiful mountain. And this is the, under the slab from the city. You can come around, come to here, and then you can just pass through to the existing campus. Also, there are a few entrances, and you be invited to, the, to enter the, this building. Also, you can see the interior situation. This is the uh, photo of the ceremony. So sometimes the courtyard uh, is a kind of expansion of the interior space. Of course, the Lausanne is very cold, so winter is very difficult, but uh, spring or summer, the people can expand the interior space to the, this courtyard. This is the entrance, main entrance, and there's a cafe, and you see the, also already there's some hill. And you go up to the library, or you go up to the restaurant. And if you walk up, and you can see the group workspace, and also uh, the, the bottom, you see the research area and the offices. <coughs> this is the the asphalt of interior space. And you see that these are the openings. It's controlled by the computer, so if temperature become uh, higher, and then this uh, will open and get the uh, uh, cold wind from the lake. And then the highest place, there are top light, and this hot air will be exhausted. So, so away. And this is the open library and there's a restaurant, and from restaurant you see the also food court and you see another, the small hill. And this is the auditorium, there are uh, movable door. Uh, Sometimes until the end we fight, try to use the very heavy curtain, but we couldn't win, and then in the end, the movable world came. <laughs> this is the ceremony. The, this is hall is for the 650 people. This is the, another uh, the project, very really small uh, temporary pavilion project that we made for Serpentine Gallery in in London. This is the existing museum, Serpentine Gallery, with a small garden. And they are situated very in the center of the Hyde Park, which is one of the biggest uh, park in London. And then they are doing the annual uh, uh, pavilion project to invite the architects every summer to make, to construct the summer uh, pavilion, which exists just uh, summer time. And two years ago, we did this, the small pavilion project. The program that uh, they asked us is a kind of 
simple. They wanted to have uh, just uh, open space where people st uh, in the park can come and stay and enjoy. And the cafe and a small lecture space. And they said they have a strong rain every day. So we, uh, we found the idea just to create the roof with no wall. So that, that there are beautiful existing tree inside the garden. So we define the shape of the roof to avoid the existing tree. And there's no wall to support the roof so that uh, people can come from everywhere or around to, uh, they can come under the roof. This is the roof, which is made with the uh, uh, aluminum plate, supported by the bunch of the column. The shape of the roof and the height, the scale are defined along with the relation with the surrounding. For instance, this here, they have big traffic with big, big truck or cars go driving so that we, give, we gave the very tall ceiling height, which is around the 60 meter. And the ceiling height getting, getting lower towards the, the Serpentine Gallery. The ceiling height, here we have six meter, and they're getting, getting lower towards the window height. And the finally, ceiling height becoming become very low, like 60, 60 centimeters or something. And we, we don't have any beam to support the roof, just many columns support the aluminum plate. Like ceiling height getting getting low to create very low area. This is where the adult people can't come. Only kids uh, can stay. You can see how the roof avoid the existing trees. And some part we have a partition to break the wind. To, to protect the people here from the, from the wind. And then the ceiling reflect, the ceiling reflect the surround, uh, the existing green like this. So you can feel you are, how to uh, say, covered by the beautiful uh, green. Like sometimes uh, the landscape looking the other way, the other way around. And uh, some part we uh, prepare the chair for the people to stay or to do the lecture. When people come together, the bunch of people are reflected on the ceiling. And then people staying very far away in the park can recognize that there is some event going on under the roof. This is the photo looking from far. You see the, how the roof shining to attract people outside. And this is another museum project that we made the last year in the small island uh, in the in the Japan in the sea and then there this this island has big mountain and the site is here just in the slope of the mountain with the beautiful topography and the beautiful uh, nature and program the program that museum people asked us is a kind of uh, interesting because they said they want to exhibit just one art piece and that they won't change the art. 
forever. So they asked us to think what kind of relation between art and the environment and architecture can help with this situation. And then this is the, the initial uh, diagra diagram drawing that uh, we made very the beginning of design phase to tell the concept, which is a water drop shape made with the uh, organic free form curve. I thought this is uh, nice to create a very enclosed one room for the art. And then this, this is also nice shape to fit to the organic topography that this area has. The, the, there are some uh, corner here, but all the other part go, goes continuity like this. And this water drop looking shape can f fit nicely in the topography. This is uh, uh, nature. They don't have any straight line. All the, the shape they have is curving. That's why we thought this kind of organic shape can be nice in the relation with the architecture and the nature. And this is looking from the side. The, the curvature also going in this way to create just one room. And then this is the section drawing that uh, I cut from the left to the uh, right to show how the roof shape changing. This is a kind of three-dimensional capture, uh, concrete shell structure to enclose the one room space under the structure. This is the only one part that we have uh, corner to invite people to come inside. <coughs> and then the, the way to construct the concrete show is kind of unusual. Like we, we made, first we made a soil mountain for the, for the molding. We didn't use the formwork, apply with formwork because uh, shape is kind of complicated with uh, a complicated three-dimensional curve. So we did the uh, soil mountain first and, uh, and then did the uh, reinforcement on it and pour the concrete uh, to create a three-dimensional shape. And then because of the structural reason, we couldn't uh, have the joint. In, in the structure, that's why they started uh, pouring concrete from here, uh, starting the pouring concrete in the morning until next morning, spending 22 hours or something. This was a very long job. And then uh, finally this shape has been made. You can see still there's a the soil stays, still stays inside uh, the show. The organic culture can be shared by the architecture and the nature. They can share the exactly the sh same, same, the line. And then they get inside the building to dig all the soil out to create the, the space. This is the, after the the all, all the soils has been uh, gone. This is the entrance. This is the only one opening which is uh, directly situated, directly situated on the ground to invite the people to come in. And all the other opening is uh, kind of floating on in the roof, in the roof. And that we didn't do any any the glass glass envelope glass enclosure to enclose this to leave all of them open to outside now this opening uh, bring wind or rain inside the building 
This is one of the opening that uh, people can see from inside outside. The space are very much enclosed, but uh, this big opening gives open feeling to directly connect inside and outside. And this is the looking from outside through through inside to the the other side of the the museum. Next project, also the island project, is that these two islands is sit very close to each other, and there is a really tiny, tiny island which name is Inishima and. There is also very tiny the village inside. <coughs> and uh, for example, Kanaza Museum's size is like this. Maybe EPFL is like this. So that means the village is a kind of uh, architecture size. And before there were 3,000 people who are living, but now the 50. But maybe uh, actually the 30 people are living. So that means uh, that there are so many empty houses and then client like revitalize this village by art. So we uh, started to find the, uh, uh, the house that to rent and uh, like to renovate from the old house to the galleries. And, uh, we have found around 10 places, the one here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So it takes a long time, maybe more than 10 years, but uh, we try to renovate uh, the house to the gallery and try to make a small, small village to some kind of a museum. But uh, the, because the, but a few years or maybe the more than a few years, the, some houses were abundant, so that means the condition were so bad. So sometimes it's impossible to use the existing structure. In that case, we decided to bring the new structure, but we try to keep the old materials as much as possible. And uh, this is the uh, villages, but we found some edge of the villages, and one place is in the village. And, uh, uh, so, and we already did the three projects. This is one and two, and uh, the rest place and three. But two are, you know, we could renovate, and one is uh, we bring the new structure, which is plexiglass. And always try to make a renovation, but not only focus the building renovation, but more try to make a renovation of the small area. Uh, in this um, uh, museum, the, it's not, uh, it's a temporary gallery, so the, sometimes every two years or three years, the art also will change. So our aim is gradually uh, change the existing uh, village scenery, but uh, not big, but slight, try to change slightly, and sometimes the, also you can see the different art. But uh, so that it's a very special place. So uh, we we mean the client and I and uh, we and also the curator agreed each other, decided each other the, to make a transparent uh, the galleries, and always you can. Uh, see the art with the surroundings. And uh, this is the first uh, place, and there is a tiny uh, shrine. And, uh, this island is uh, famous of the stone, and this is a small sh shrine <coughs> for the stone god. And uh, the site is uh, just uh, foot of the small stone shrine, and uh, so the, this is the old house, but we took I took uh, we took away the old uh, the bracing and make a empty room, and instead uh, b because we need the uh, bracing, so that we add two quarters two works for the earthquake. So this is the old house, and we kept the old structure and also the roof materials, and this is the 
we move a little bit to the center and use the old uh, roof and also the structure and uh, took away the old uh, small walls to make an uh, empty gallery. And this is the shrine. And you see the very transparent gallery and these two courtyards works as an earthquake for the earthquake. And uh, let's see here. So these are the old structure and uh, the bring the new material for the finishings, but try to make uh, some similar color, try to find a similar color. And uh, for us, uh, we, this building is, looks old, but looks new. And <laughs> you can enter also the courtyard. This is uh, one of the courtyard. And then move to the, close to the village itself. And you see the roofscape, and then there is a future site and you come down to this side and there are the place to be able to make new uh, two uh, galleries. The, already the condition was so bad, so that we broke. We took away the, the structure and then maybe these two will be made by the aluminum. So that I mean that the, you cross to the this and then the, the aluminum reflect the surrounding also that you can enter the gallery and then the gallery's uh, interior wall will be made by aluminum which is the <coughs> surrounding the scenery come to the inside and you see the art with the existing the scenery and then next place is that this is that this place is between the two mount the small mountain the very there is thin in the road and along the road we make the two galleries made by plexiglass the, it's completely transparent the gallery and there is along the road and there is another will be this become next phase and this already we made and then to show the art but if you see the art always you see together with the daily the daily lifestyle life they they life and the existing scenery. This is the interior. Now the art is inside, but I don't have the photo. And always you see the art with the existing uh, the scenery. And then the next place is a rest place, is the highest place of this small village. And then this made by the aluminum. And then this is the next uh, phase uh, project that we can use this, the old structure. All days, this, is, this house uh, was used by the richest people, so the structure is very beautiful. So try to make, to show the uh, existing uh, materials as much as possible. And, and then the last one is uh, this, and. Uh, this already we renovated. We made uh, two big uh, the windows which penetrate uh, this side and this side. You can see each other. And, and uh, so the, all the galleries is, are very transparent and always you see the art with the existing condition <coughs> and which is uh, our aim and try to make a, a space where sometimes the people feel to come to the museum, but also the just to feel uh, to visit the villages. This is a small, small house project built in the center of the city. And uh, recently, the issue of what kind of relation between architecture and the surroundings can be made. This is becoming 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 very important issue for us. And then I, I thought that the, even for the house, uh, it's nice to have open feeling for the people to, to live in the very dense city area. And then this is the house, uh, with uh, together with the wooden neighbor wooden construction house neighbors here and here the site is very long in the south 
north north south uh, direction then uh, uh, the way of the project is we lined up each rooms required in a way that they they are shifted like this to create small gap in between them this gap gives the sunlight and uh, wind uh, to the each rooms and another thing that uh, we did is we gave the very tall ceiling height for each rooms for more bright uh, feeling and then the some of the roof can be movable so that the rooms uh, when you open up the roof and the window the room became become kind of semi indoor outdoor patio feeling and then uh, by shifting the boxes uh, this small patios are made outside of the house and this is the photo looking from the outside through inside this is very transparent uh, feelings is made through the property and each room has their own independent dimension and then different uh, dimension box rooms meet like this to create a, a gap to provide the daylight inside and each room has a big window and when you open up the window the wind starts moving through outside through the inside and you can feel the environment where you are living and uh, we did the uh, translucent uh, screen to softly divide inside to get the uh, transparent feeling and then to get the uh, a little bit divided feeling inside the, the house. Now this is another project, another small, very small house project that uh, we are now working on in the Kamakura city. Kamakura city is the very famous with the history, cultural history and the nature. And then uh, two uh, people, a uh, young couple bought this small property just in front of the local station and then they the program that they were have is house and uh, the artist shop on the tree because wife is an artist and she wanted to live here and to do the shop but the problem is that the site is really small and then the uh, Kamakura City requires us to have big setback to create open space around. And then small property becoming even more small. And then we can have just uh, 60, 60 square meter or something, which is really small for the house and uh, shop. And now we are working on the China uh, the guest house project in China. This has a uh, hundred, uh, 1,000 1, square meter for just three people. So 60, meter, 60 square meter for two couple for house and the shop is really small. But uh, I, I found, I realized that the, this smallness and the density can be interesting to create a, a special, a special house. The idea is, this is the concept model that to tell the idea. I gave the structure unit like this table looking unit made with the floor and four legs. We, this each, each structure unit has a program. The program and the, and the structure unit uh, uh, correspond to each other. And then they come up together to create this kind of the mountain uh, landscape, and this they are they are stacked like this way. This way, that gives the 
inside the space and outside space on every table top. So they, all the spaces are kind of connected, but kind of divided. But all the space can directly get out from, from each room to outside. And the space that we and I gave the atelier shop program on the ground. And the program getting, getting private as they go up. The, we have the kitchen dining, the living bathroom, and the, the, the utility and the bed, uh, bedroom on top. But all the space has direct access to the outside. Uh, this is the model uh, drawing, uh, computer graphics model drawing looking from the side. And by uh, shifting all of them, so many columns happen inside the building to give even more density uh, feeling inside the building. And also two more, the three more projects what we are doing. And this is a, the small museum in Tokyo downtown. And uh, the size is 300,000 square feet. And uh, because of the, for the Japanese, uh, the wikioi, so that hate the natural rights, so that we don't, uh, we cannot make a windows, of course. But also the, the downtown scale is not so big scale. So we try to divide the big volume to the smaller volume. But also this and next project, we try to make more, uh, because sometimes we make, uh, we consider relation to the outside, but or sometimes only the inside, but we like to more the uh, interior relation and the exterior relation makes one shape together. So that this is what we're trying now. And this is the site. So that you see the different small building around. And uh, so the, this is not just a box to connect. The, the depend on the floor, the, sometimes the bigger floor or sometimes smaller floor. So the, every floor change the shape and then using the, the, the street, we can bring the some connection between inside and outside. And this is the section. And the ground floor is the entrance to the museum. And then this is the also some street to see the outside. And then, so this is the, so the basically the completely the mass volume, but the, uh, sometimes uh, some part connected, sometimes the divided, and then to make some shape. And next one, also the small public the building is located the suburbia of the Tokyo, and this is a small library with some public functions. In the so the, the also surrounding the, the there are two stories the houses, and then the, we divide the ground floor the public program to the uh, few volumes and try to keep the uh, outside the surround around the rooms, but gradually become one volume and the top floor become a one bigger space for the library. And the shape is like this. And this case also the, uh, the upper part become a bigger volume and lower part is a smaller volume. This is the last last project that we can show today, which is Louvre, Louvre uh, Museum in the, the countryside of France. The Louvre Museum in Paris uh, is decided to make second museum in this city, which is called the Lens. This is the city. Uh, one hour, one hour far away from Paris. And this city, Lens, city, uh, used to be famous with the coal mine industry, 
but they uh, now they stop doing the coal mine industry and then they lost the industry that's and then that's why the uh, france french government and louvre uh, museum people decide to bring the museum program to this city to revitalize the this town the site of the this museum is here they have a little hill in the middle of the city, middle of the town, and this became the project site. The site has a, a very uh, a unique topography like this. The program that they provide is uh, quite big, with 40,000 square meter in total. So we felt 40,000 square meter box is too big to fit to this site. So one of our, our idea is to break this program, break down into several different pieces to get the even more smaller feeling. That this smaller pavilion scale can fit nicely into this topography, we thought. And still the site has a lot of remain, the, a lot of things, the rail, the old railway, uh, the hill. So the, there are some small line which use for the railway or the there is the hole or the, some another line. So the, this is, we made the softer curve to each uh, space, try to have a good relation to the existing things. The, this is a floor plan. We have the very open entrance foyer here with many small program and then here we have a, a temporary gallery and permanent gallery here and the people uh, uh, walking in this hill can go through the building this is the elevation that we are thinking the transparent part and the opaque part opaque part is made will be made with the shiny uh, aluminium facade and uh, this is the uh, entrance way which is totally transparent and uh, we have uh, we have the skylight to give uh, to give sunlight to the exhibition space the collection of the Louvre is very huge, starting from the, the 4,000 before Christ until the 19th century, so that we gave the very long proportion for the exhibition space to show their art collection on along with the timeline. So people can start with the ancient uh, prehistory uh, sculpture and then they can rise up along the history to uh, finally to go up to the modern uh, 19th century they can feel how the european history has been changing through the uh, they can feel the history with through the art collection and then also they can see all the different art uh, collection all together. So Louvre's aim is that people, the visitor can learn the different uh, culture and the movement of the civilization. And uh, they want to have a gallery people can also feel continuity to the current, the contemporary uh, time. We mean that they want to, they don't want to show the art 
the old art. The, they really wanted to the connect the continuity to the to now. The people can go through the history like this, and then they can come to the this transparent gallery that where people can enjoy the the view outside that this town has. This continuity is something that they want to achieve through the museum. The transparent part here and the opaque part here come like this. And then the facade reflect surroundings to trying to have some harmony between architecture and the landscape. This is the construction. Construction has started since two, two years, two years ago. And then this is the one of the gallery with the walls and the transparent sky light, glass roof. And we are now thinking to have aluminum wall outside and inside. Outside, the wall, architecture wall will reflect surrounding, and the inside, the wall will reflect the art, like and, this. And also visitor. So that means the, the, because the, the Louvre Paris is a very luxury building, but we must make cheap building <laughs> and compared to the old days. So that is the, it's very difficult to think about the interior, but we now almost uh, uh, we decided to use aluminum and so that means the reflect the visitors and the art. So that you can feel the, some luxury, the contemporary luxury, but also the always the people uh, feel, I hope, the be involved in this process. Since a building has a calm curve on, on the wall, so that the reflection on the wall will be a little bit, uh, how to say, uh, distorted in a way. It's not just a reflection. And uh, now we are working on the construction site, and the completion will come the, the end of 2012. This is the last photo of today. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Would you like to take some questions? Yeah. Yes. They will welcome your questions. <laughs> yes, there's someone right there. Matthew. Hi, thank you very much. You talked about, in, in terms of your spaces, how the shapes fit the program. And you also talked uh, a number of times about uh, the, the limits of spaces as well. And, and I'm the, you talked about how the shapes fit the program and the limits of spaces and also the thresholds of spaces. And I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on the corners to spaces. There are corners outside of the spaces, uh, inside and of the spaces. What does a corner mean to you? Corner. A corner. Um, there are many type, different types of corners, of course. Uh, what, what, are you thought, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, the, he said uh, the interior and outside. He helped us. <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Asking, about, um, asking about the difference between a threshold or a kind Th of thresh threshold, a kind of a threshold. layer, layer. Yeah, or uh, a corner a as corner. something more, I guess, more three dimensional. I don't <laughs> quite understand the question myself. <laughs> um, for instance, in the, the uh, 
the last project that you showed, uh, the the museum that you just showed, uh, there were images where we were. There was one uh, model photograph where uh, you we saw the interior of a large room, uh, and there was a d divider in the room, a wall that appeared to be inside the room that was curved. And then, of course, inside the room, there are also all the many objects. And then there are also the corners to that room itself. Uh, that is one case of where you have thought about corners. And also in your, uh, I guess it's the, what is it called, EPFL, the very large Boeing uh, mat building. Uh, you talked about the, the limits to spaces and when you look oh. out across Different. one space to another, uh -huh. corner. the what, rooms what, blend together. What is some fun? Sorry, I don't, I cannot understand, but maybe I try to uh, answer something. <laughs> and then. <laughs> First, you. The, maybe you saw the models, the big room divided like this wall. This is just a trial, and uh, we will not do that. <laughs> so that is a bad model. <laughs> Sorry, the, you mentioned that the divided like this, no? Rubu, the last project. The, and for me, what I'm star struggling now is always I feel until now we try to make a relation between inside and outside, but still, I don't know your meaning of corner, but for me also the something is very difficult because uh, the, sometimes uh, we try to make some continuity between the, uh, each different program inside or some space interior to relate to have a relation to the outside, but always I felt something still bad because the interior it program itself cannot touch the outside. So the we show the last small museum project, which I try to bring more strong relation the the program itself to the outside. So sometimes we make a very simple volume and then the interior is a big space so that is a, have a, some smooth relation but and you, we see the very outside well but the corner appear very strongly. That means that this line still too strong. For example, Kanazawa is it's, uh, sometimes the, even the very transparent, but the shape appears very strongly to the outside. So we can explain the very smooth relation, but at the same time, as I experience, the glass wall stand. And but of course, architecture should divide outside and inside to make some interior environment. But I think even the, the of course, we need some wall between the inside and outside, but I try to find more strong relation. That means the, some shape or the, some design works, I believe, I hope. So that every day I try to find that. I hope that is some answer to your question. Uh, yes, very much. Uh, if I may ask for uh, one elaboration, um, oh, another <laughs> very quick. <laughs> so it's you. As it pertains to that, people. to that answer, what is the difference between a uh, curved room versus one with angular corners? Maybe to be more specific. Sound problem, I think. <laughs> <laughs> May hi. Thank hi. you for the uh, lecture. Oh. Can I ask a question? Or are you going? Oh. Oh, you can go first. 
It's, it's a shorter question. Uh, I was just curious, in the Teardrop Gallery project, you said that there was one singular art piece that you were designing in mind. And I was just curious what the art piece was and how you integrated the design of the museum with the artist. Can you say again? The, the one art piece in the Teardrop Gallery, what is that art piece and how does the museum relate with it? The artist is the Japanese female artist whose name is Miss Naito. She's quite well known in Japan. And her project is the uh, water, she used water. And then water in the morning, water appears from somewhere in the floor. And the water getting, getting big to create the fountain. And then uh, it's kind of interesting. Water runs because uh, floor is not that floor is not just flat. They have a little bit inclined slope to gather the water to at some point. And then they disappear. Anyway, it's a kind of water water out piece. And then it's a dynamic. It's not the it's more, moving. More than 100 point the small water coming from the floor in the morning. And then the water move and then become one bigger water area. And then the night this disappear again. And always the this island is uh, famous with water because uh, most of the island in Japan has a problem with the uh, lack of water. But uh, exceptionally, this island is, has somehow much green and water because of, I think, big mountain. That's why Miss Naito found water as a, a heart, heart of her project. Even in my case, I thought water can be very important things to think on this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, throughout your works, I sense this strong um, fascination with abstraction in your work, um, no matter um, in, in case of materiality or structure. And, and uh, looking at the museum with the one single opening, we can easily relate that to uh, the pantheon of uh, Rome. And uh, uh, I want to ask you to comment on this ideology of abstraction in relation to um, the kind of Japanese culture that you um, embrace with, and also um, the kind of philosophy you kind of um, believe in. So, abstraction. Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he mentioned especially that this is the museum or the general? General. 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 <laughs> General, even even the maybe, use maybe of so white uh, of color. Not only Japan, but maybe Asian area has more close relation to the surroundings. No, the, it's, a, a, it's it's not. <laughs> mm, very difficult question. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, <laughs> mm, the, understand the understanding of nature could be something different in Japanese case. I don't know. And uh, uh, generally, Japanese architecture is very open. Open. They don't have a wall because the season. We have four season. And um, uh, watching the season more uh, carefully, Japanese people has uh, 24 different season coming next next uh, uh, during the year. I uh, I think uh, because of the humidity, because of the earthquake, we always try to create some dynamic relation with the outside and inside, I think. 
And then another thing is that we always try, we always make things very simple, I think. This is, a, I don't know if it's a nice thing or not, but uh, looking at the Japanese temple, everything is made in a very simple way. And it's, uh, we can say this is abstraction, but not only abstraction, I think uh, their way is uh, always make things very simple, I think. And then our building, our project is also kind of the same, same line, I think. Creating some dynamic relation between inside and outside, trying to make things simple, I think. I'm not sure. Thank you for your lecture and uh, uh, through your design, I think your design gives me the sense of very brisk and uh, light um, feeling because your structure is like, you use very, a lot of transparent materials in your uh, art museums and galleries. And, but at the same time, I feel it's not that light. It still has its very heavy, uh, studies in the like in a city it's not it's, it, it feels like a ladder but it's still very you, you know what I mean it's heavy so <laughs> I mean I can feel the power of your design so I want to ask how you p balance your uh, the light and the heavy sense in your design or how to show the power of your buildings Thank you. And he mentioned she mentioned about also we have some heaviness. Yes, there's uh -huh. heaviness, even uh -huh. though the idea is light. Uh -huh. What do you think? Yes, uh, I, yeah, our aim is uh, uh, not just to make a right structure. <laughs> it's not so. But for us, light, lightness and heaviness is the same thing, I think. This is like uh, uh, how you can feel, feel the gravity, how you can feel the existence of the things. So for us, lightness and heaviness is almost the same, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.